During the election, the Conservatives appeared to win popular support for their call for a crackdown on school discipline. And since then, the Coalition Government has made plain its intention to legislate to give teachers greater powers to improve behaviour in the classroom. But exactly what sort of powers are needed and where should the balance lie between the rights of teachers and the rights of students and parents? How you go about searching people, um, it's a key thing. You know, you need to be clear about what you're looking for and why you're looking for those things. I think that they should use reasonable force and I think that, that, should, that should be allowed. While that grey area exists, it's very problematic. But having said that, how do you define what reasonable is? Because every incident is actually unique. In this episode of Need to Know, I've come to Bishop Challoner Catholic School in London to talk to staff and students about the latest plans from the Coalition Government affecting the searching of pupils, after-school detentions, the use of physical restraint and the granting of anonymity for teachers facing allegations. But before that, let's look first at the recent changes put in place by the Labour Government. The Education and Inspections Act of 2006 was the first legislation to give teachers a specific legal power to impose a disciplinary penalty on pupils. This applies both inside and outside the school. Sanctions can be imposed for breaking school rules, disobeying instructions and for unacceptable behaviour. But any action must be reasonable and proportionate, taking account of circumstances such as special needs. The last government had already introduced extensive powers for schools to search pupils if they believe they might be carrying prohibited items. Now the new government is saying it wants to extend that list to cover not only illegal items but also those things which could be used to cause disruption in schools. The current law, passed in 2009, says teachers can search for and confiscate weapons without needing pupils' consent. And it was already intended that this be extended to alcohol, illegal drugs and stolen items from September 2010. Now the government plans to use existing law to add to this list so that teachers will also be able to search for personal electronic devices such as mobile phones and personal music players, pornography, fireworks, cigarettes and legal highs. A new bill in autumn 2010 will go further still giving teachers a more general power to search for any item that may cause disorder or pose a threat to safety. Currently in legislation, teachers can only search for alcohol, drugs, weapons and stolen goods. So they can't actually, for instance, if a child is refusing to give up a really irritating mobile phone on, on their person, uh, they can't actually uh, remove that phone without fear of prosecution. So the invidious distinction between what you can search for and what you can't search for has been removed by Michael Gove and I, I really do welcome that. I think that's a very good move. How you go about searching people, um, it, it's a key thing. You know, you need to be clear about what you're looking for and why you're looking for those things. And I think if you have good reasons to search, uh, whether the powers were there or not, uh, good schools would carry out that search and do those things. By defining that a little bit more clearly, um, that will help schools certainly and it will help teachers. And what do the pupils at Bishop Challoner make of the new powers? Is it reasonable for them to be able to search you and your possessions? Um, yeah, most of the time, yeah. It's because they, 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 don't, they don't frustrate you or anything. They just take you to one side and say, look, we just want to we just want to look through your bag and that's it. We don't want any trouble. So and it's, at the moment, it's really calm. And if they do find anything, they don't uh, make a big fuss about it. They take them away and just have a, like, a talk with them and sit and then discipline them in the way that they see fit. One issue on which there has been perennial confusion is the permissibility of physical force. Changes brought in by the last government give teachers legal protection in certain circumstances. Specifically, force can be used to stop a pupil from committing an offence, causing injury to themselves or others, damaging property or to prevent a pupil prejudicing good order in a school. Guidance issued in April 2009 said force was justified in these circumstances provided it was reasonable and was a protective, not a disciplinary action. But the Coalition Government wants to go further and will issue shorter and clearer guidance 
which explicitly states that teachers can physically remove disruptive pupils from class or prevent them from leaving a room where it's necessary to maintain order. I think some publicity of that to, to parents and students uh, would go down well. Um, it's a long, long time since that law was revisited and anything that makes it clear to parents about their rights and the, the rights of the teacher and the rights of the education establishment that their child's at um, are very important. Do you have your own guidelines within the school, your own guidance we, on we, things like that? All schools will have a policy on this and in that policy they will outline how they expect uh, teachers to restrain. It's this idea about reasonable force and um, we, we train our staff to make good decisions. We make sure that there are several staff available uh, if we need to do uh, take those steps. Sometimes you hear students and indeed parents say, yeah, you can't touch me, teacher, you've got no right to touch me. Do you ever, do you hear that or? or yeah, you... all, the time, all the time, all the time. You're not allowed to touch me, it's not true. Mm -hmm. In, in um, some of our, in the new planners, it says um, teachers are allowed to restrain, no, no more than restrain. Not, they're not allowed to strike any student, but just to hold them back, just to calm them down. That, that's all they're allowed to do. But according to a parent's advisory service, it may not be easy to produce simple advice to cover such a complex area. That sort of guidance, I think it's quite difficult to actually um, make it clear enough to fit every situation. And I think teachers have got to have that flexibility and, and making a decision according to the situation that they're faced with. Well, the government is constantly saying it's going to make short guidance and only recently I said to ministers it isn't the length of the guidance, it's whether it's fit for purpose. Um, and actually, uh, this is an area that's fraught with a great deal of difficulty at, for government and actually for schools. And it's one of the things that teachers find the most difficult to exercise judgment over. Uh, because they're often working in a school policy that says they mustn't touch a pupil. But then again, they're working in a duty to protect the interests of pupils. So they see a fight, they go and try and protect the interests of pupils and find themselves accused of assault. Now what the legislation says at the moment is that um, teachers can use reasonable force. The big problem is how do you define what reasonable is because every incident is actually unique. The government has also made changes to teachers' powers to impose after-hours detention to reduce the bureaucratic burden and to allow the penalty to occur on the day of misbehaviour. The government has said that you no longer need to give a 24-hour written notice to parents if you want to have a detention for a pupil after school. Is that a good idea? I think the idea that you can keep somebody on the day that they've done something wrong it is a good tool to have in your box. Uh, but there is a responsibility for schools to just make sure that, that parents are away, and certainly with younger children, um, that, that's a key thing. Um, but the modern society, we have mobile phones, we can text parents, uh, you know, there is email. So I, I don't see that being a problem at all. Do you think that um, parents and yourself should be given a day's notice if you're going to be asked to stay back after school? Well, um, it has its pros and cons, obviously. Um, for example, if a student messes about and then he gets an hour of detention, they tell him, oh, we'll, we'll come tomorrow and we'll do the detention. Some students, they just don't come to school the next day or, and they just run away from the teachers. I see a problem there for parents if they are not told that their child is going to stay late at school. Um, I think it's a courtesy. Uh, parents need to know if they've made arrangements for something else to happen in rural areas, they might miss that bus. You know, it's, it's problematic, I think, to take that notice away. A further change signalled by government is the plan to grant anonymity to teachers facing accusations from pupils and to take further measures to protect against false allegations. The granting of anonymity for teachers who are accused by pupils, is that something you've welcomed? We're a little bit disappointed it's only anonymity up to the point of charge because we actually wanted anonymity up to the point of conviction but nevertheless it is a step uh, in the right direction. But we've also highlighted to the government that actually although anonymity is an important issue the most pressing issue from the point of view of teachers now is the soft information that's recorded by the police and social services when a teacher faces an allegation. And because the majority of allegations against teachers prove to be false, what happens is that when a teacher applies for another post, a CRB check is done 
and that CRB check will reflect that they've had an allegation made against them. And so we're ending up with teachers' careers being permanently blighted even though they've been exonerated. Bearing in mind that schools are absolutely at the centre of their communities, that word gets out very, very fast, and that your whole personal life can be destroyed as well as your professional life simply by being suspended. But actually, there has to be some balancing of justice. If a teacher is still suspended when an accusation is made, isn't the damage done whether or not anonymity is granted? Yes, and that's a very good point indeed, and that's something we're going to pursue. Actually, local authority guidelines are all over the place and differ. Some uh, say, well, look, um, actually suspension should be a last resort. Some say, to protect yourselves, there should be a first uh, action. And in fact, actually, I think the, what we need to be doing and what we will be doing with the government is saying we need a consistent approach from authorities and the bias should be against suspension. In today's society, um, there are some students and some parents that feel that if they're not getting their, their own way, then they'll just make a, a spurious allegation against a member of staff. I think what I'd like to see from the government is maybe a little step further to clarify just what should happen with the student and the parents who are making these allegations and, and how they're going to be dealt with. Beyond the issues discussed in this programme, it's anticipated there will be reform of other areas of discipline and behaviour, such as bullying and exclusions. As these changes become clear, Need to Know will return to cast light on all the latest developments. Thank you.